Hey everyone, I hope all of you are doing great. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how we can use Grafana to connect to Microsoft SQL Server database. And then we are going to create a dashboard. We are probably going to create a couple of panels. We are also going to use variables. So let's get started. So here you can see I do have SQL Server Management Studio open. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and create a database. Now in your case, you might already have database available. So you don't need to go ahead and create a new database. But here for the demonstration purpose, I'm going to go ahead and create a new database and I'm going to call it my database then click on OK and you can see new database has been created. Now of course we will also need to create couple of tables and probably we also need to insert some sample data. So let's go ahead and select new query. And I do already have this SQL queries available which is going to go ahead and create two tables. Uh, one of them is called products and the other one is called sales. And it is also going to go ahead and add some dummy data to products. And here you can see the query to inserting some dummy data to sales table. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy everything and let's go ahead and paste it here. Run it and here you can see everything executed successfully. So I should be able to expand my database and then expand tables. Under here you can see we have dbo.products and dbo.sales. We can do select star from product and you can see this is the data which we have available in the products. Let's go ahead and do select star from sales. And you can see right now we have only one record here available here. Now I can go ahead and run this insert query again. It is just going to go ahead and insert some random data and I can just execute it multiple times. And then we can go ahead and see select star from sales. You can see now we have quite a few entries available here. Now, of course, for demonstration purpose, you may create a Python script, which is going to run this again and again. So you have some continuous data available in Microsoft SQL Server. Now everything looks good here. We can go on and move on to Grafana. So now here in Grafana, we are going to open the menu and then we are going to go ahead go to connections add new connection and here we are going to search for ms sql now here you can see we do have microsoft sql server available and this is available in grafana open source as well so let's go ahead click on add new data source now here you can provide any connection name so it, it is called ms sql but if you want to change it maybe uh, call it ms sql underscore demo you can go ahead and do that and here in the connection, I'm going to provide the IP address followed by the port. So it is 192.168.1.19 colon 1433. Database name is my database. This is the one which we created. Now here in the SSL authentication, I'm going to keep it false. But if in your case you have SSL enabled, you need to make sure you enable it here as well. Again, in the authentication type, you need to make sure you select the correct authentication type. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and select SQL Server. But in your case, you need to check with your DBA what is the authentication type which you need to use. So I'm just going to go ahead and use SQL Server authentication, going to provide system administrator username and going to provide the password here. Now you can see I'm using system administrator, but this is something which is not recommended at all. In fact, the user which you are going to use should have only select permission. Here you can see it is clearly mentioned. Anyways, for now, let's go ahead and scroll down and we are going to click on save and test. If everything is okay, you should be able to see DB connection is okay. Now we can start creating dashboard by clicking here on building a dashboard and then we can click on add visualization. Now here we need to select MS SQL demo data source and here now you can see we have option of choosing tables. So here you can see we can see products table and sales tables. These are the tables which we created. So I'm just going to choose products and then here in the columns you can see these are the columns which are available under products table. Now if you want to see all the columns we can just choose star and then click on run query. Now once you do that you can see we are seeing data is missing a time field and the reason for that is because here we are selecting time series but our data products data do not really have a time field. So we can go ahead and change it to maybe table and then you can see we are able to see the products data. Now here we know we have quite a large number of uh, products so we are going to go ahead and enable pagination. So this is how it is going to look like. Now we can go ahead and click on apply and this is how the data is going to be shown. Now of course you can go ahead and enable filters as well. For example I can just go ahead click on dashboard settings then go to variables go to add variable. Now here in the variable type I'm going to leave it to query and here you need to provide the variable name. So I'm going to apply variable on category so I'm going to call it category and here you can provide label so let's say we can call it select a category. Now here in the data source, we need to select the correct data source, which is going to be MS SQL demo. And here we need to provide the SQL query, which we want to run to get the values of this variable. So I'm going to write select distinct category from products. 
Now here you can see in the preview of values, we are able to see the values. So let's go ahead and click on apply and then click on close. Now here you can see we do have this filter and we are able to make a selection of either electronics, fashion or appliance. But right now if you make a selection, this data is not going to change automatically. And the reason for that is we need to make some changes in this query. So we are going to go ahead and edit this. And then here you can see we have an option of enabling filter. So I'm just going to go ahead and enable this filter. And then once you scroll down, you should be able to see filter by column value. So let's go ahead and click on add and then you can choose the filter which you want in this case we want an end filter and then we are going to choose the column so in this case i'm going to choose category column we can choose the operator for example in this case we can go ahead and select equal to operator and then here in the string we are going to provide the variable name so our variable name was called category so we need to prefix it with dollar symbol so i'm just going to use dollar category now let's go ahead and click on apply. Now we should be able to let's say select fashion and our data should be showing only fashion related data. I can go ahead and change it to home appliances and I should be able to see only home appliances. Now if you want to select multiple items then we can go ahead and make some changes in the variables. So here you can see I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to enable multi value. Let's go ahead click on apply. Let's go ahead close it. Now we should be able to select multiple items. But you will notice if I select multiple items and click anywhere, you can see we are not really getting any data. So it means we need to fix our query again. So we are going to go ahead and edit it. Now here you can see we are using equal to operator. So in equal to operator, of course, we can go ahead and select only one item. So in this case, I'm just going to change it to we have an any in option. So I'm just going to uh, select any in and then let's go ahead, click on apply. Now we should be able to select multiple items and you can see we are able to see the data so let's say if i just select fashion and home appliance you can see we have data only for fashion and home appliance now i'm going to show you how we can show some sort of trend line so we are going to go to add visualization and we are going to make use of a sales table so i'm just going to select sales and here in the columns we are going to first of all use sales timestamp and if we use timestamp we can go ahead and use time series or any other panel which is having some sort of trend line using timestamp so here we are using timestamp i also want to use another column which we are going to show over the timeline so that other column is going to be quantity so we want to basically see number of quantities being sold over a certain time frame now we can go ahead and click on run query here you can see we do have some data so here i'm going to change it from let's say last six hours to last 15 minutes and you can see this is the time when we inserted some data. So I'm going to go to SQL Server. I'm going to insert some data now. So we should be able to see some entries here. So here you can see I'm just going to go ahead and run this again. Let's run it a couple of times and let's click on apply. So soon we should be able to see data here. If you're not seeing the data, you may need to refresh it or you can just go ahead and change the refresh interval to five seconds. So it is going to automatically refresh every five seconds. Here you can see we do have now new data available here. Uh, let me align them. Now let's go and click on add visualization. And in this case, let's go ahead and use stat and now i'm going to show you how you can go ahead and use your custom sql query so in this case rather than using builder which is the default option we are going to go ahead and use code and here i'm going to use select sum of all the quantity from sales hopefully the field name is correct let's go ahead and click on run query okay so you can see we have sold as of now 67 quantities now here i'm going to change the panel title and going to call it quantities sold and let's click on apply Okay, so this is how it is going to be shown. I'm just going to move it here. Now, one thing if you have noticed, uh, let's say I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate it. And now I'm just going to go ahead and edit it. So here you can see anyone can come and paste any query. Okay, so anyone who is having edit permission here in Grafana, they are going to have the ability to insert SQL query here. So rather than using the select query person may go ahead and use some delete query or maybe truncate DB query or any kind of query. Okay, so that's the reason you need to make sure the user which you are using for Grafana to connect to Microsoft SQL Server is having select only permission. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and click on apply. And I guess that's all for now. If you have any question, please feel free to let me know in the comment box. I'll be more than happy to answer. And I'll see you again in the next lesson.